behavior of the inventors. Now, our first hypothesis is that we have found that with movements, with increased number of movements, the average rate of knowledge spillover goes on increasing for the inventors who move than those who do not move. And this is exhibited in patenting in different classes rather than patenting in the same classes in which the inventor used to invent before. Now for the data collection part, we use the USPTO, the United States Patent and Trademark Office, from which we collected a huge you know, data set consisting of patents and inventors. You can see the number over there for the inventors. And a series of Java programs were written for you know, deriving at the final part. The two big boxes that you see over there were the data elimination phases. Uh, we did some filtering on the data. Like the inventors who had single patents, uh, they, didn't, they didn't exhibit any movement, so we just put them out. And those with self-file patents in the beginning and end of their careers were also the anomalous data, so we excluded them. And finally, we were left with the inventors who were either still or moved in the companies in the time frame of 15 years, that's 1995 to 1990 to 2005. Now, coming to move, we provided our own definition of move and no move. Now, when we went through the data set, it appeared to us that when a person, say John Doe, is moving from a company selling this to Lockheed, a person would say that, okay, that's a move. But according to us, that wasn't a move because as you can see from the example, the patent that he filed over there, you can see that the, on the same application date, he filed two different patents from two different companies. We assume that this is the result of a collaboration between Salinese and Lockheed, and this is not an actual movement. So according to a definition, this is not a movement. Just keep it in mind when we, when we just proceed. The other definition is, as you can see, if you find a self-filed patent by an inventor, which is marked by an empty cell under the assigning column, that's the company column, it's a self-filed patent. So when we saw such a self-filed patent with the same company name before and after it, it means the inventor again didn't move but it may be that the company was not interested and he filed it himself. So that's the same, you know, that's the same company, so it isn't a move either. Now, how do we, how do we quantify our knowledge spillover metric? Uh, we need it cognitive spread over of knowledge, and it's written in this way, where by YI, I mean the number of unique patent classes in which an inventor files a patent. Now say, I, I invent something in fiber optics, and when I file it in USPTO, maybe they give me a patent as class 410, so that's unique for my invention. So for each invention, they have some unique patent classes. Now what I, what I assume over here is, by why I, I mean those unique patent classes under which the patent was filed when I, or the inventor, was in the company I. So in this way, if I assume that I have worked in, say, J companies till date, then the expression union of YJ will represent all the unique patent classes under which I have filed my inventions till date. And by the set difference, I need to say what's the additional, what's the additional knowledge that I have gained, and that's the additional patent classes under which I file after moving to my next company. And I just go on summing it over on all the companies for which I have worked in my life. It may be a bit confusing, but I'll be illustrating it with, a, with an example. Now see here that uh, when I am com in company, for the first company, that's YI. You'll see that in YI, the patent has been filed under two patent classes. In the second company, it's one patent class. In the third, it's again one patent class. It's 385. And this goes on. 
So how I measure my spillover is I just do a set difference. So first I do y2 minus yi, y1. So that comes to zero because you know you can just find out from here. And I just go on doing the same for all of them. When I travel to y3, the third company, I just do y3 minus union of y1 and y2. In this way, whenever I do a set difference, it will give me the additional patent classes in which I am now patenting my new inventions. And in this way, it will capture the additional knowledge that I am gaining with each of my movements. Now, this is a summary of the findings that we had. And we did it for three different type of industries, the telecom, the IT, and the biotech. As you can see that uh, we saw that there had been a number of moves, uh, first twice moved, thrice, then moving to 11, 12, and so on. Now a trend that you observe over here is with more movements, you see that our metric S, which is the knowledge spillover or the gain in knowledge that goes on increasing, which means that when I move, when I have a lot of job hoppings, when I go on moving from one company to the other, I sort of gain knowledge, I sort of tend to patent in classes which are different from the classes in which I patented before. So that sort of captures my gain in knowledge, my gain in technical expertise. And this trend we saw, it, you know, it goes on for all the three types of sectors. And this is our graph, as you can see here, the three colors, you can see that the pink one is for the IT, the light blue is for the biotech, and the uh, deeper one, the deeper blue is for the telecom. And you see here that in the x-axis we have the number of moves, and in the y-axis we have the spread over of knowledge. And it's a very clear return that with number of moves, we see that the spread over of knowledge goes on increasing. However, the rate is not the same for the three companies, for the three sectors, IT being the highest, followed by biotech, and then finally by telecom. Now, when we fitted cubic curves, it appeared like this. The equations are given over here, but there was a little limitation in our um, in research, as you can see that the upper two curves with each movement, we see that the upper two curves, they go on increasing monotonically, which is perhaps not very practical, you know, because that means that if you need to gain knowledge, just go on hopping, job after job, that's, that's not done. So we, according to us, we feel that the third curve, which represents the telecom, is much more realistic, because here you see that there is definitely an increasing in the spread over of knowledge with number of moves, but that you know, that patterns out after a certain time and it's, according to us it's more practical than the other two. And we maybe might we might aim to focus on this sector in our future research later on. So we would want to say that we provided a quantitative analysis on the interplay of number of moves and spread over of knowledge. And you know, we tried to find out how with movements and job hoppings you trend to gain on knowledge. And uh, there is the effect of knowledge spillover. And the analysis had been done for three across three industries like telecom, IT, and biotech, and the relationship holds for all of them. So in effect, what we want to say is with job hopping, with the movement in your employ, when you change your employers, there is a profound knowledge spillover effect. And you go on absorbing new knowledge you know, with each change. And this acts on your technical expertise, which is exhibited by patenting in different classes in which you had never patented before. So this somehow captures how much you gain how much you gain in your expertise when you go on moving from one company to the other. It's just like cross-pollination, you know. The, the insect brings on the pollens from a flower which belongs to a different tree. 
and I've heard that cross pollination after cross pollination, you get good fruits. It was just like that. You know, you gain something uh, when you move from one type to the other. And we try to provide a quantitative analysis of the entire thing. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you for your attention.